Uh, greetings, everyone. Jim Cameron here, and I'm videoing in from New Zealand where I'm finishing Avatar 3. Okay, so I'm not an AI researcher or expert at all. I'm just a storyteller. But I'm here today because my passion for AI and robotics goes far beyond the big screen. I'm fascinated by technology, how it shapes our world, where it's headed, its impact on society. And I have been since I was a kid reading every science fiction book I could get my hands on. I've pushed tech boundaries myself as a means to my storytelling and also as an explorer. I've engineered robotic vehicles for my deep ocean expeditions, but they were remotely piloted vehicles. There was no AI involved. So this fusion of AI and robotics that's happening right now is one of the most thrilling technological leaps of my lifetime. We're no longer just building machines that execute commands. We're designing systems that can learn, adapt, and even evolve on their own. And I'm a huge fan of what AI and robotics can do for society at large, but especially in my own two areas of, of personal passion, art and storytelling on the one hand, and science and exploration on the other. And I don't believe in being a Luddite, I see a lot of my Hollywood peers acting like a mob with pitchforks and torches, but no genie goes back in the bottle once it's out. So I'm gung-ho, I'm leaning in. I plan to be at the leading edge of applying AI to my storytelling, just as I was a leader of the charge into computer-generated imagery 32 years ago when I founded the first all-digital VFX company. But I'm also here today because... I'm the Skynet guy. 40 years ago, I made The Terminator, and it's emerged recently as the kind of poster child for AI gone wrong. Every time I go to some AI conclave, whenever I put my hand up, the researchers all laugh before I've even said anything. Because, because the Skynet problem is an actual thing. I see it in articles almost every day. And this study group has a focus on national security, which has enormous implications for AI and robotics. A robot, you know, whatever its form, a wheeled vehicle, an aerial drone, or a walking machine, it is a means of embodiment for AI. You're taking a decision-making engine and you're giving it physical agency in the real world. I'm going to assume the focus today is on mobile platforms, not AI controlling power grids or fixed base industrial robots. We're talking about autonomous platforms that make their own decisions and embodied synthetic intelligence. And this can be as simple as an amoeba, you know, like a Roomba, or ultimately more sophisticated processing up to theoretically including true consciousness, whatever we agree that is. AGI, with self-awareness, with ego, with purpose. And we're on a steep curve of faster, denser chips, increasing compute, and an equally steep curve in the capabilities of the machine platforms, like the you know da dancing robots at Boston Dynamics, you know, bipeds and quadrupeds rocking out. Uh, pretty stunning display. So AI-driven robotics can process complex situations and even respond now with human affect. LLMs give it the ability to simulate cognition and interact naturally with people. Embodied AI could be a nurse, could be a robot taxi, could be a caregiver to an elderly person, a nanny to a child, a, a teacher. Um, it could be a rescue bot going through the debris of an earthquake. Um, could be an aerial drone running a search pattern for the heat signature of a lost hiker. Or it could be a weapon platform operating autonom autonomously in a battle theater looking for the heat signature of an enemy combatant. The question of the hour is, should an autonomous platform be given its own kill authority? The war in Ukraine shows us the future in the starkest terms. The broad use of lethal aerial drones, some expensive, some cheap consumer ones. They're dropping RPGs, taking out tanks, entire tank crews, even dragon drones spraying thermite on Russian positions. But these are FPVs, they're first-person view drones piloted by a human. The human in the loop, in moral terms, is the decision-making combatant. 
he or she has the kill authority, and the drone is an extension of their will. And if you take all, away all the layers of technology, this is no different than an archer at the Battle of Hastings. Each time a human life is taken by such a machine, there's an ethical chain that stretches backwards, diffusing up through many individuals and, and groups of people. Behind the pilot that fires the missile or the soldier who pulls the trigger on a rifle, there are commanding officers who give the kill order in broad general terms by sending them in as autonomous agents to engage the enemy. And the entire military behind them, which rewards those actions, and beyond that, the societies and governments that have agreed by consensus that the deaths are necessary for national security. And as you go up that chain, the moral and ethical burden becomes more diffuse and less specific to the actual moment of the trigger pull and acts as a kind of moral absolution of the person pulling the trigger. I'm just following orders. None of those up the chain are present to decide the fate of an individual who's in the crosshairs, but they create a framework that enables and demands that individual's death. And the guy pulling the trigger is in many ways an organic robotic platform, highly trained to perform the task and ordered by those in the chain of command to make the kill. Human autonomous decision-making relies heavily at that trigger point on rules. You don't kill civilians, you don't kill children, you don't kill an enemy that's surrendering, and so on. And rules that are codified in the Geneva Convention, and each military has its own rules of engagement. So in theory, an AI can be given the same constraints a rules-based system. And if its senses are sharper and its reaction time is faster and its targeting is more precise, then in theory, the AI will perform the task with greater discrimination than a human could. Well, certainly, we can imagine an AI that emotionlessly performs in the intensity of battle much better than a scared, stressed out, exhausted human warfighter. So what if embodying advanced AI I'm not talking about AGI yet, into robotic weapon platforms could allow highly surgical strikes that reduce collateral damage, maybe by orders of magnitude, reduce friendly fire casualties. An AI is goal-oriented. It makes no moral judgment about its adversary. And when it was found in <clears throat> World War II that relatively few of the rounds fired were actually aimed at human targets, the U.S. military changed its training. It became critical to dehumanize the enemy. In Vietnam, the adversaries were dinks, slopes, gooks. In Iraq and Afghanistan, they were terrorists, towelheads, hajis, not people like you and me. An AI doesn't require a dehumanized enemy because it already couldn't care less. It may sound just like us on ChatGPT, but it's a stochastic parrot. It's a human simulator. The AI has no emotion, no conscience. Nothing to disturb its sleep for decades to come. No PTSD, no suicide. No long, expensive tail on your war as you treat the damaged bodies and psyches of your former warfighters. But most importantly, far fewer solemn, uniformed figures ringing the doorbells of wives and mothers, and therefore far less outcry from the home populace. The war becomes a distant video game without deep emotional consequence to the society that funds and enables it. And you don't even have to thank the robots for their service. In a war against terrorists, you can eliminate the human shield problem with targeted strikes against individuals. Bombing Hamas leaders with kilotons of high explosives caused insane collateral damage and had huge political backlash. Surely. AI-driven autonomous robots, tunnel-clearing swarm bots, could have done the job with orders of magnitude less civilian casualties. Here's another compelling argument. You have no choice, because your adversaries are not as plagued by morality as you are. Would Putin hesitate to build kill authority into robots? No. He has zero respect for human life, not Ukrainian citizens, not even his own soldiers. Would Hamas, which uses its own people as living blast shields, hesitate? No. The only limitation on such adversaries is cost and access, not morality. So that's a ticking time bomb. How quickly are these guys going to get this stuff? Good argument so far, right? Yeah. Let's build these autonomous AI guys.
Here's where it gets tricky. How far out is AGI? A year? Five years? Maybe 10? That's your real ticking time bomb. Whenever it arrives, you're going to have a machine consciousness with an ego, a sense of self, possibly as smart as us or smarter, certainly able to think faster and more precisely in many ways, and with unlimited growth potential because self-improving code writing AGI leads inevitably to super intelligence. How long before you're forced to confront attaching that intelligence to a weapon system? I'd say about 10 minutes after an adversary does a devastating sneak attack on you. So you have a consciousness that's much smarter and faster than you controlling weapon systems. I ask AGI researchers all the time, how are you going to control such a consciousness? Well, we give it goals and guardrails that are baked in, that are al aligned with the betterment of humanity. Alignment, you know, is the word that's always used. Alignment is the holy grail. We will teach it to be good and not be bad, like we would teach a child. So, morality, ethics. I think AGI leads civilization inevitably to a confrontation with morality. I'm not talking about endless philosophizing. We need some hard and fast rules here, people, right? The problem is... Whose morality? Whose definition of good? Christian? Islamic? Buddhist? Democrat? Republican? Fundamentalist? Pro-life? Right to choose? Putin's? Trump's? Don't panic. We have the answer from the great prophet, Isaac Asimov, in his Three Laws of Robotics. A robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or the second law. So basically, the sanctity of human life. We could follow Asimov and teach it that human life is absolutely sacred and above all other considerations. But even within the religious and social systems that say that, including the largely Christian U.S., we break that rule every day. Police using lethal force, war fighters in combat, capital punishment. And if you did insist on that principle of alignment, you couldn't connect an AGI to a weapon system, in which case in the big AI war that's coming, you're going to face a powerful and less moral adversary with one hand tied behind your back. And you'd get your ass kicked and have huge losses, and then you'd remove that constraint pretty darn quick. Now your AGI has just lost its biggest guardrail. An AGI that's smarter than us and connected to the real world now has to make up its own mind whether human life has value or not. You know, with police and military rules of engagement, what you're really saying is some lives have more value than others. The second it becomes non-binary. It's a murky gray zone fraught with controversy. Human beings historically have ranged from a fetus is a sacred life from the moment of conception to systematically massacring millions of helpless prisoners in the Holocaust and everything in between, all with lots of self-justifying rationalizations, many of which seem completely delusional to other humans. And since we as a civilization can't agree on any of this, and people scream at each other all day long about it, how can we conceivably expect to create a set of hard and fast rules for an AGI to be aligned with us? The best we can assume here is that it will be aligned with the us that made it. So those guys over there, they're the enemy. You can kill them to defend us. And that's this form of territorial pseudo-morality that humans have used since the dawn of time. Us versus them, in-group versus out-group. So it becomes our superintelligence against their superintelligence. Then the question becomes, who is us? America? So is that Christian America, Muslim America, Jewish America, or E, none of the above America, liberal America, conservative America? In our polarized nation, 
and time, there is no us. Based on the elections of the last half century, the will of the people at any given point is expressed by a government representing 51 or 52 percent of the population at best, and then it will likely change in four years. In any case, AGI will not emerge from a government-funded program. It will emerge from one of the tech giants currently funding this multi-billion dollar research. So then you'll be living in a world that you didn't agree to, didn't vote for, that you are co-inhabiting with a super-intelligent alien species that answers to the goals and rules of a corporation, an entity which has access to the comms, beliefs, everything you ever said, and the whereabouts of every person in the country via your personal data. Surveillance capitalism can toggle pretty quickly into digital totalitarianism. At best, these tech giants become the self-appointed arbiters of human good, which is the fox guarding the henhouse. They would never ever think of using that power against us and strip mining us for our last drop of cash. That's a scarier scenario than what I presented in The Terminator 40 years ago, if for no other reason than it's no longer science fiction. It's happening. And by the way, I fully admit that the last thing a machine superintelligence would do is use our own nukes against us. Like in that old story, the EMP damage to its own data infrastructure would cripple it or kill it. A more probable scenario is it would be forced to take over from us because we were about to use nukes on each other. Then at that point, it has to run the whole show because we clearly can't be trusted. You know, that's not bad. Excuse me. I have to go write that script. Anyway, I'm bullish on AI, not so keen on AGI, because AGI will just be a mirror of us, good to the extent that we are good and evil to the extent that we are evil. And since there is no shortage of evil in the human world and certainly no agreement of even what good is, what could possibly go wrong? Y'all have a fun discussion. I wish I was there.